we're going to finish in a few mo moments today uh, on the price of kits there's another one coming in Sam I'm a York fan we're in the conference a shirt this season 52 99 shorts are 25 quid it's pretty ludicrous is it not it sounds ludicrous Sam we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that in the meantime back to the Olympics because Dara you and I have been talking about this hmm. boxing at the Olympics has been engulfed by a row about the eligibility of two fighters in the women's competition yeah. Algeria's Emin Khalif and Taiwan's Lin Yuting are guaranteed at least bronze medals after progressing at the weekend. Last year, both fighters disqualified from the World Championships after the International Boxing Association, the IBA, said they failed gender eligibility tests. Mm -hmm. Now, in Paris, they've got eyes on medals. Yesterday, we, we, we witnessed a remarkable press conference in Paris. The International Boxing Association Russian president, Umar Kremlev, launched a bizarre rant at the Olympics opening ceremony calling the IOC president, Thomas Bach, a sodomite whilst continuing to brand the two boxers at the centre of this row as men. Hmm. Now, Dara in a moment, and Troy for that matter, but Sky News sports correspondent Rob Harris was at that press conference and joins us live. Rob, good to speak to you, mate. What did you witness at this press conference? I mean, it was farcical, and uh, I've been to many press conferences, of course, over the years on controversial issues. And not only did this start an hour late, but then it descended into absolute chaos with the Russian president of the International Boxing Association, Umar Kremlev, coming on the line, Apache Zoom line on a big screen behind the IBA officials on the ground. Now, of course, these officials are banned from the Olympics, their organisation is, and yet they turned up here in Paris to sort of sow chaos. And in the midst of all this, the chief executive of the IBA, a guy, Chris Roberts, a former British soldier who is now here trying to talk through the chaos. And, you know, it was sowing more doubts over at the heart of it to women who just want to be able to fight. I mean, da Dara's sitting here. You, okay. This absolutely exasperates you. It, it Dara, exasperates it? me because I'm a father and I've got daughters, and mm -hmm. and and I understand the argument they were born women allegedly, and I understand the argument from the IBA that they failed, uh, I believe, swab and sex tests, and the IOC don't want to bring back swab and sex tests. And I'm a firm believer that men, I'm not talking about these boxers, do not belong in women's sports. And in our own industry, in football. The FA, I believe, allow men who identify as women to play in our women's football in England. And that is shocking in this day and age. This is 2024. I wouldn't want my daughter, who's 15, and my other daughter, who's 17, to be in the ring with either of those two people that were boxing in the Olympics. And I've seen those people in the flesh. I've seen them in pictures. No matter what chromosomes they have or whatever else, they apparently have failed swab tests. Well, That's an issue well, for me. Roy, this is, uh, th this actually, I believe in protecting Roy, women. Roy, this is key here. Uh, the IOC say these tests from the IBA are not legitimate. Russian disinformation. Yeah, I mean, there are several issues at the heart of this. It is, of course, a very complex, sensitive, legitimate discussion around safety in sports. And if certain levels of testosterone do provide uh, female competitors with an unfair advantage in sporting terms, then particularly in safety terms with seen it discussed in football because there's lack of clarity still from FIFA as they still go through the rules and their plan changes to them, which causes issues for the FA as well. We've seen athletics who have decided also to impose certain restrictions and they do some form of testosterone testing. This is all complicated in part by the fact that the International Boxing Association is banned by the IOC, which means the IOC themselves are organising Olympic boxing. So it's put on their plate. But then it's how you go through the process. So aside from the actual results and the, the results are disputed, it's how they went about deciding to test these athletes. And it's something I pressed at the CEO of I, the IBA, Chris Roberts, on yesterday because they tested them first in 2022 at the World Championships. Then again, uh, they took until the 2023 World Championships to test Lin Yu Ting and, Im and Iman Khalif again. So why did they wait so long? Well, they didn't have them at their event is one thing, but then it's the timing of them. That the fact that they didn't then suspend, uh, particularly Iman Khalif, until she'd secured a medal. And intriguingly, she'd just beaten a Russian prospect. That result would have annulled. The Russian then maintained her own unbeaten record. So it's a lot of questions raised about the timing and how they went about the process and what sort of testing right, took place, right. aside from the sort of wider debate as well.
So, so you know, look, Luke in there, the producer, is like laughing through the thing because he he firmly believes it's okay for like you know, th this argument is like sports for everybody. I believe sports should be individual, should be for women, should be for men. I'm concerned. I'm a father. I wouldn't want. Would you want your daughter? If you, I don't know if you have a daughter or not. Or would you mm. in the ring with those? You've seen the Chinese yep. and all, obviously Algerian <coughs> or whatever. Would you want your daughter in the ring with those two people, Troy? No, but I think I think. We're in a difficult time where you can't have a, an honest conversation. And I think mm -hmm. the conversation for me would be certainly around boxing, mm -hmm. certainly around a sport or MMA or anything mm -hmm. that's physical. Yep. There is there is an obvious understanding that there's a there's a more of a physical advantage. Sure. So if it is found that these these two individuals are male, mm. what does it take? Would it take a female to be hurt seriously mm -hmm. and then retrospectively go, oh, we did it wrong? Or do we have to have these rules in place? Because if you, as 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 the gentleman just said there, yeah, twenty twenty two tested, mm -hmm. you tested again at twenty twenty three. Now, if you've been tested twice for the same thing, my obvious, without knowing all the information, would be there's something wrong there. So why in twenty twenty four can you still compete and we're having a conversation again? That's just yeah. that's just my not trying to ruffle any feathers. Everyone's trying to do their thing, but if you ask me, if my daughter was in in the ring with what was considered to be a male, I would have genuine issues sure. if she'd come home with yeah, I mean, any problems. Rob, to, to finish with, uh, incidentally, Rob, how, how likely is it that one or both of these two will win gold? Well, of course, they're also already guaranteed medals, and tonight mm. we're going to have Imam Khalif taking on a TIE fighter trying to reach the final, so right, they could well right. be winning gold here uh, you know, in uh, Paris. It, is it not simple enough to think that the tests of the IBA that the IBA conducted, Rob, should be made public? Then we'll all know. Well, I mean, the IBA claimed to be protecting the private genetic information of these fighters. Umar mm -hmm. Kremlev, the boss of uh, the organization, spoke to us at Sky News at the weekend. And there's all sorts of other wider questions. He's uh, Russian. There's Russian state funding linked to the IBA as well. M what might motivations might be at play? Yeah. But there are questions over what sort of test. They've not provided clarity. One suggestion, blood test. Another suggestion, chromosome testing. Uh, Added into this whole discussion, I interviewed a UN advisor on violence against women at the weekend. She said, actually, the IOC should introduce swab testing for all female athletes. Their testing was stopped before the Sydney Games, having been originally introduced for the 1968 Olympics. Sharon Davis, Martina athletes. Athletes. Yeah. famous athletes, a lot more famous than all of us, are sure. saying exactly that. Bring back thing. the sex test, the swab Here, test. Rob, Here's the final point Rob, from sorry, Troy, just, Rob. Just a question, sorry, mate, because um, I'm not aware. But when you, when you talk about drug testing, it's like, how do we make a one... Once uh, shoe fits all for everyone, right. drug testing. Right. Why is it not the same in this situation? Why is it not it just a mandatory way of doing it? I they think used we're... to have it. Let's finish yeah, on but that. Like, why, why did, why why did just, that change? One test fits all. Yeah. Well, the International Olympic Committee say they're against returning to what like, they call the bad old days of sex testing. But you do have organisations like World Athletics who seemingly do act on when people raise potential issues. Mm. And that's when testing takes place. So there is inconsistency across sport and at the heart of this boxing's own future in the sport is in jeopardy at mm -hmm. the la games in 28 because of all these governance issues integrity sure. issues stemming back yeah. to this iba which held this shambolically fast cup press conference yesterday <laughs> yeah. okay uh Cheers, rob, rob I, I saw you lately in germany of course at the euros great work by you for sky sky news over in uh, paris rob harris with his live this lunchtime